really fun to tell. Please be seated. Beloved is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, uh, we bestow your blessing upon Patrick and upon Kara as they unite their lives in your name. May they share life's joys and life's trials and grow in understanding and devotion. May love and companionship abide within their home. May they grow old together in health and in happiness, ever grateful unto you for the union of their lives. And let us say, Amen. Amen. O God, we lift our souls in praise. All creation declares your glory. Through humankind fashioned in your image, you have revealed your majesty. You are the source of life and joy. Bless the covenant which this bridegroom and this bride now seal in your name. Be with them in the sacred hour and in all days to come. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Today, Patrick and Cara have chosen to marry. Their love unites two different lives, families, and faiths. Out of these two distinct traditions, Patrick and Kara have come together to honor the best of both. We thank God for allowing us to reach this joyous and wonderful occasion. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam shehecheyanu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, O Lord, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and for allowing us to reach this joyous time. We read from the Old Testament, from the second and eighth chapters of the Song of Songs. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he stands behind our wall and looks in at the window. He glances through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away, O my dove. My beloved is mine, and I am his. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is stronger than death, and its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of God. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. I now call on Patricia Cantwell, Patrick's mother, to read from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. Thank you. The ketubah is a tradition in ancient Israel that goes uh, many, many decades back, centuries and centuries. And it was a document that in its original form was set to protect the bride in a time when very many societies chose not to. In that way, it was sort of a business document. And so the question is, why do we include a business document in a time when we should be focusing on love and hearts and marriage and music and joy and all of that. And the rabbis explain 
that everything that makes for a good business relationship makes for a good marriage. The day-to-day -day communication, the caring, never letting anything slip by, tending very well to the business of your marriage each and every day. And Patrick and Cara, it is our hope that you will approach this grand opening, as it were, of your life together with that same dedication so that we will celebrate with you your 25th and 50th and 75th wedding anniversaries, which we all expect to be invited to. <laughs> now, before this ceremony, the ketubah was uh, read and signed. So technically, Patrick and Cara are already married. It was nice of them to show up. <laughs> but I'd like to ask you to face friends and family and please read this to them. Yes, together. On, On the 21st, 21st day of August, day of August in, in the year 2010, 2010 we, Patrick Robert Cantwell and Cara Shira Tatiana Smith stand, stand together, together in the, the presence, presence of loving, loving family and friends to, to enter into the holy covenant, covenant of marriage as, as husband, husband and wife. wife. As, As beloveds and friends, and friends we, we promise, promise to love, love honor, honor, cherish, and, and support each other. May we be ever open and honest, slow to anger, and, and quick, quick to forgive, always sensitive to each other's, each other's needs. needs. May, we May we seek to understand one another, treating each other with respect and, and kindness. And kindness. And may we remain, remain committed to each other's physical and mental well-being, and to each other's emotional and spiritual growth. May, May we, we always, always encourage and challenge one another to be, to be the person we are yet to be. We, we promise to work together to create a home which, which nourishes and shelters the body and the spirit, a home where the flow of the seasons and the passages of life are celebrated, a home filled with reverence for learning, loving, and generosity, a home where fairies is always treasured and friends are always welcome, a home filled with the spirit of hospitality and, and unity with the larger community. community. A, a home filled with love and laughter, where, where dreams are nurtured. A home, home of passion and compassion, compassion, sweetened and honored by the traditions of our mothers, mothers and fathers, and blessed, blessed with everlasting peace. peace. We, we promise, promise to remain faithful to this covenant, in body and spirit, through harmony and through discord, through abundance and through scarcity, through health and through illness, through, through joy and through sorrow. Through May we, May we be ever mindful that our, our days together are a gift from God, God and ever grateful, grateful for each new dawn we awaken to share with one another. The, the miracle of our love seals this document. Wow. They did that really, really well considering I didn't tell them I was going to ask them to do it. But as well as they know English, still it was a challenge to read three small paragraphs together, how much more of a challenge is it for them to order their daily lives so that day after day, year after year, they enjoy the joy of this moment and all that this moment promises. And you couldn't see it because the ketubah was in the way, but they were helping each other. And that's the key to making a marriage work each and every day to help each other. Now, in ancient Israel, it was some of us referred to as the good old days, when a couple got married, all the property of the bride became property of the groom. So the ketubah, which was a document that protected the bride, was never actually given to the bride. Rather, it was given to the one person who everyone knew would best look out after the well-being of the bride, namely the bride's mother. <laughs> I would now like to ask for the rings. These rings are more than just an outward symbol of the marriage that is taking place. The fact that the rings are unbroken, they are solid, there is no gap in them is symbolic of the love that you, Patrick, and you, Cara, have for each other, and symbolic of the love that the divine has for each and every one of us. And that love must remain unbroken. 
that every day when you look at that ring, you need to remember that, that God's love is with us always and your love for each other is with you always. So Patrick, I'll ask you to put the ring on Kara's right index finger. In ancient Israel, the wedding ring was put on the right index finger because just like the Roman custom of the ring finger, the right index finger was seen as a direct line to the seat of the emotion, which in ancient Israel was the liver. Now it certainly sounds a lot better to say I love you with all my heart than I love you with all my liver. But from this we learn that when we read you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, it's not talking about an emotional tie, rather it is talking about an intellectual one because the heart was the seat of the intellect. And it says, set these words which I command you this day upon your heart, meaning learn them, and then teach it diligently to your children. So Patrick, if you would repeat after me. I, Patrick. I, Patrick. Take you, Cara. Take you, Cara. To me as my wife. To me as my wife. I promise to cherish and respect you. I promise to cherish and respect you. From this day forward. From this day forward. In times of celebration and sadness. In, in times of celebration and sadness. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And Kara, repeat after me. In accepting this ring. In accepting this ring. I pledge you all my love and devotion. I pledge you all my love and devotion. Now, Kara, you would put the ring on Patrick's right index finger. And repeat after me. I, Kara. I, Kara. Take you, Patrick. Take you, Patrick. To me as my husband. To me as my husband. I promise to cherish and respect you. I promise to cherish and respect you. From this day forward. From this day forward. In times of celebration and sadness. In times of celebration and sadness. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And Patrick, please repeat after me. In accepting this ring. In accepting this ring. I pledge you all my love and devotion. I pledge you all my love and devotion. And face back. Seven times in the Torah it says when a man takes a wife. Uh, for this reason there are seven blessings recited uh, in the ceremony uh, joining together this bride and this groom. I will recite the blessings in Hebrew and then we'll read them in English with a modern interpretation. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam borei pri hagafen. Blessed is the one who created the fruit of the vine. Bless the two of you who come out of long traditions of struggling to find out what it is to be human. May you be full of the wine of life. May the life force and the knowledge of the human heart always be with you. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam shehakol baro lechvodo. Blessed is the one all creation mirrors your splendor and reflects your radiance. Bless the two of you that you may know all the beauty that comes from the great heart and may you always live in its radiance. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam yotzer ha'adam. Blessed is the one who created human beings. Bless the two of you that you may know it all joy and struggle, beauty and sorrow, sweat, tears, solitude, companionship, laughter, and ecstasy. May your marriage be strong enough to support you to experience whatever you must as you come to know yourselves and each other and to discover the entire range of your humanity in the process of soul making. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Asher yatsar et ha'adam b'tzalmo b'tzalem de mutavnito 
Vihitkin lo mimena bene adeyad, Baruch atadonai, Yotzer ha adam. Blessed is the one who created woman and man in the divine image, so that we may live, love, and perpetuate life. Bless the two of you that you may delight in the wonder and impossibility of the fact that you are so similar and so different. May the difficulty and enormous pleasure of being a man and being a woman continually fascinate and engage you and be the source of your bonding. Sos tasis fitagel ha'akara bikutz b'men ha'letochin b'simcha baruch ha'tadunai misameach tziyon b'voneha Blessed is the one who brings people together and unites the divided. In joy we have come to witness this marriage of many cultures. It is said that everyone gets married at a wedding. Bless the two of you who bring us together through your union today. Sameach tisameach reim ha'ahuvim yeritzach ha'began eden mikedem baruch ha'tadonai misameach ha'tan v'kala Blessed is the one who rejoices that the love between this woman and this man is as the very first love in the garden. Bless the two of you who recreate the world for us and for yourselves. May your love be as old and as new as the first love, and may you also bring new life in all its forms into the world. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam, asher bara sason v'simcha chatan v'kala, gila rina ditza v'hevda, Ahava va Ahava ve Shalom ve Reyut, Baruch Atadunai, Misamea Chatan im Hakala. Blessed is the creation of joy and celebration, lover and beloved, gladness and jubilation, pleasure and delight, love and solidarity, friendship and peace. Soon may we hear in the streets of the city, in the paths of the fields, the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of lover, the voice of beloved, the triumphant voice of lovers from the canopy and the voice of youths from their feasts of song. Blessed is the joy of lovers, one with another. Drink and then give to Kara. This cup of wine is symbolic of the cup of life. As you share this cup of wine, you undertake to share all that the future may bring. The sweetness that life's cup may hold should be sweeter because you drink it together. The drops of bitterness it contains should be less bitter because you share them. Could you please join hands and face each other? You have now affirmed before God, your families and your friends, your bond of love and your commitment. I do hereby ratify the confirmation of your marriage vows and pronounce you, Patrick, and you, Kara, to be lawfully wedded as husband and wife. You, Kara, and you, Patrick, have consented together in holy wedlock and therefore have pledged your faith to each other. Therefore, I witness and bless the bond of marriage you have contracted. Furthermore, I call upon all of you to be witness to the bond we now confirm and bless. I call upon you not only to be witness to this bond, but by your love, understanding, friendship, and compassion to work to help Patrick and Cara to strengthen and develop this bond throughout their wedded life. For no one must separate what God has joined. We pray, may the spirit of love be ever part of your lives so that the union we here celebrate this day be worthy of continued celebration tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Yevarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Ye'er Adonai panavelecha vechunecha. May the Lord let his countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yaseim lecha shalom. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The 
last thing at the Jewish wedding is the breaking of the glass, which Patrick has been obsessing over. <laughs> there are about 845 reasons why we break the glass. I will not tell you all of them today. The oldest comes from the Talmud, one of the rabbis, Mar Barsina, the daughter had gotten married, the party got out of hand, and he broke an expensive vase in order to bring an air of solemnity back to the occasion. In the 13th century, a text entitled Kol Bo uh, tells us that it reminds us of the destruction of the two temples. Uh, my favorite is that uh, for every piece of glass, the couple will have a year together, and a variation on that is the couple will stay together uh, until the pieces of glass are put back together. Uh, I was told this variation by a gentleman who had just celebrated his 39th wedding anniversary, and he said his mother-in-law had spent the entire dinner trying to put the glass back together. <laughs> Patrick? X marks the spot. <clears throat> Mazel tov. You may now kiss your bride. I now present for the first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick and Cara Cantwell.
They did wonderfully. So they read the whole ketubah. I hadn't told them I was going to ask them to do it, and they read it all flawlessly. Completely hitched, are they? Completely hitched. <laughs> From now on, forever.